Hi guys, so put your web solutions, just ask hello from New York, referring to the emails hot string at this time code in one of my videos, how to modify it to bring up a menu showing many email addresses and allow the user to choose only one from the list instead of printing out all the email addresses, right? So uh, I really like that question because um, it is very useful what he's asking. Like you could use it for many other things, not only emails, but also it just so happens to be so like very easy in AutoHot QB2. At least in my experience with other languages, I find this one to be easier to do this kind of thing. So let me go ahead and try to do a short video explaining or demonstrating how you can do that. So first of all, let's start with the first part of what he was referring to. So I had some sort of hot string like this that was sending uh, email at personal.com, for example. We're going to have a personal email. And if you run this code, if you just go ahead and run it, EMLS space, it just sends the email that I have here. That's what a hot string does. Now, if you want to have multiple emails, Probably what he did is that he created a multi-line hot string, which can be done like this, right? Now I have five emails. And to create a multi-line hot string, you can open and close the parentheses like this. And now everything in there, it doesn't matter if you have new lines in it, they get sent. So let's run this one. And when you do this, you get the five emails sent like this and then let's imagine that he needed only number four now he's forced to delete these guys and stay with number four so it adds a little bit more work to his workflow and probably he doesn't want that so how can we convert this into a menu this is the cool thing out hotkey has a menu object so this is going to be my emails and this is a menu so this is an object called emails. It is a menu that is going to contain, contain the list of emails. And once you create a menu like this, you can uh, show it in the end. Once we add items at the moment, this menu is empty. So even if I want to show it, I don't think anything is going to happen, right? There's nothing in there. But this object now has a method called add. And this thing has three parts. We have the menu item name that we're going to create, which in this case is going to be our emails, the callback or sub menu. I'm going to show both and then some options, which at this point we're not going to use. But at this point, the three parameters are optional. That means that I can just call add with nothing in it like this. And what that's going to do is create a divider. So I'm going to demonstrate that as well. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, let's add five of these guys, right? And then I'm going to copy this text and put it right here. Easy peasy. I just added five, five emails. I don't have to do the whole thing. Comment this out. And now what I have to do is to tell it which action I want to perform. And by action, I mean function. So I'm going to have to specify a function here at the end. And for me, the callback function, the function that will be called whenever I click on one of them, let's name it email handler or something, right? It's going to be the same for all of them. Every single, it doesn't matter which one I click, it should call this function. So what we're going to do with the email handler is I'm going to define the function and callbacks are special. So if we go to the help menu here and we look at the callback parameter of the add method, it says that your callback must be defined with three parameters, item name, item position, and my menu. Because every time you click on one of these things, this function gets called with those three things. It gets called with those pieces of information so that you can use them and do whatever you want with them. In my case, I am interested in the item name because the item name is going to be the email directly. Um, in some cases, you might want to know the position or the last parameter being a copy of the menu. You might want to know which menu called 
this function. In this case, I don't care about the position or the menu. So I can just select them and just replace them with an asterisk. In V2, when you do this, you're saying, hey, I do want to see the item name, but I don't care about any of the other parameters. And you can ignore all parameters if you want. So you can say, hey, just ignore everything, right? But in this case, I do care about the item name and I'm going to use it by using the send command. So I'm going to create what is called a fat arrow function. And it is just a function that has one action. And I'm just going to call the send text function. If I have an email that has some weird characters, I don't want those weird characters to be translated into anything. So send text sends the text exactly as you're looking at it. And at this point, I want to send the item name, whatever I click. That's it. I just did it. This is a working function, right? The email handler here, let me rename this variable. I'm going to make it email at this point. This is good. This is a working example. Right now, if I assign this to a hotkey, for example, let's say that I have it on a hotkey, F1. Every time I press F1, it will show the menu. And whenever I click on any of these guys, it will call the handler, which in turn will just send the text to whatever window uh, I am at at the moment. So let's run the script. Let's go to the bottom and let's press F1. And there is my menu. Very cool. Now let's go ahead and press one of these guys. Let's say three. There you go. Now you don't have to be deleting anything. You send the one that you like. There you go. Very cool. Now, um, he did mention something about a hot string. Now, for hot strings, it is a little bit tricky because hot strings are meant to send text. So right now, if I do this, notice that the right side is brown as opposed to this one that has some sort of coloring, right? This means that this, if I type this, uh, this hot string, what is going to happen is that the text is going to be sent as is. And that's not what we want. We want to execute that. So for that, we need to set an option here called X tells the hot string instead of sending the text that is right next to uh, on the right side, just go ahead and execute whatever is on the right side. That has the desired effect. And what we're going to do here is let me test it out because I think Something is going to happen when the menu shows up. Let me show you. EMLS. There it goes. So the menu did show correctly, but this didn't delete completely. The reason why this is happening is that the menu itself uh, blocks our hotkey from doing anything else. What can I do about it? Because I don't want to have characters here. Well, what we can do at this point is have a little bit of a delay before showing the menu. So let's add a sleep. Let's say 100 milliseconds. I think that's good enough. Um, you can change this number to whatever you prefer, but just give it time to the hot string to be able to delete the whole thing. And once it's deleted, then go ahead and show the thing. So that's what we're going to do now. And then uh, EMLS. Now the hot string was deleted and my menu showed up without any issues. That's how I do it with a hot string. All right, so now what we're going to do is let's create a sub menu because, yeah, I have a lot of personal emails, but I also have some company emails that I want to have. But uh, those, uh, I don't want to mix them with the personal ones. Okay, so for a sub menu, let's go ahead and do something like company. So now we have a different menu here. And this one, we're going to add a few things. So I have five things. And let's just copy these guys. And again, this is the email handler. They're going to call the same function because in the end, the action is basically the same. It's just a different email that I'm going to get. And instead of personal here, they're going to say company or something. Now, how do I create a sub menu? So on my main menu, which is emails at this point, I'm going to create a blank line and this generates kind of like a divider now that i have a divider uh let's go ahead and emails add i'm gonna have here company emails but instead of pointing to the email handler as i did before 
Now this will point to the company object that I created above. That's what makes this a sub menu at this point, because when it, you hover over this one, it will go ahead and display the other menu. So let's go ahead and test it. Again, I'm going to use the F1 command. And there you go. We have all our emails, a divider, and now a sub menu with the companies. And if I go to another spot and I click on any of them, it will work just fine. So again, as I mentioned, this is, in my opinion, extremely simple to follow in comparison specifically with other languages. In other languages, there's a lot more that must be done. Here, I just set a hotkey for that or a hot string, doesn't really matter. Just be careful with hot strings and the sleeps um, because, again, it just keeps some certain characters in there if you don't have that sleep. But everything else, as you saw, is extremely easy. So hopefully, this answers that particular question and hopefully gives you an idea of something else that you might want to do. Not only emails, you can have menus and submenus for many other things, um, especially if you're just going to be sending text, like it is just a group of things that you just click and it sends that, menus are great for that. So you're going to see you guys on the next video.